Marquez, the legend, the goat, my favorite and everyone else's favorite tech YouTuber. When MKBHD releases a video on an Apple product, I'm right there ready to watch. And in a lot of Marquez's Mac reviews, the M1 and M2 13-inch MacBook Pro, the M1 Max 16-inch MacBook Pro, and the Mac Studio, Marquez is showing how those Macs perform in Final Cut Pro. You might know by now, I'm a Final Cut Pro editor here. And we all love Final Cut Pro. But I can't help but get a little triggered when I see that he's got a gap clip in the primary storyline and he's basically turned off the magnetic timeline, which is pretty much the single greatest feature of Final Cut Pro and really what sets it apart from other NLEs like Avid Media Composer, Premiere Pro, and of course DaVinci Resolve. It's also the single most controversial aspect of Final Cut Pro. It's really polarizing. Editors like me stick with the app because of the magnetic timeline, while others who switch from track-based editors run screaming from it after a few days of use because it's such a massive paradigm shift. Now look, I'm not here to judge, I'm not here to yuck someone else's yum, I'm not here to even say that Marquez is using Final Cut Pro wrong. I don't like to deal in absolutes because... Only a Sith deals in absolutes. But for those of you who are struggling with the magnetic timeline, whether you are brand new to it, you just switched from Premiere, or you've been editing in Final Cut Pro for years, just like how Marquez does, and you're curious to know if, for you, there might be a better way to edit. Well, let's jump into the edit bay and have a little coaching session to break down the gap clip method that Marquez uses versus the magnetic timeline method that I prefer to use. All right, so let's take a closer look at how MKBHD edits in Final Cut Pro. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you watch all the way through this breakdown because at the end, I'm gonna give a tip for the magnetic timeline that I've never given before in any of my Final Cut Pro videos. You're definitely not gonna to wanna to miss that one. All right, so let's take a closer look at Marquez's timelines. You can see here in my Final Cut Pro, I've got some B-roll clips pulled from some of Marquez's videos. And you can see down here that he's got this gap clip in the primary storyline. So what are the drawbacks to using the gap clip method of video editing like Marquez does. First of all, you're going to have taller timelines. And what that means is your window isn't going to necessarily be taller, but the amount of stacked clips are going to be much taller because you have all these clips overlapping in your timeline. And these stack clips can make it difficult to navigate your Final Cut Pro UI, especially the timeline window, while you're video editing. So if you're on a 13-inch M2 MacBook Pro or maybe the new M2 MacBook Air, things can get a little crowded in your timeline when you're stacking clips like this, similar to how Marquez does. Even in one of Marquez's videos that I pulled for this video, he talks about how he can't really edit on a 13-inch MacBook Pro. I wouldn't use Final Cut Pro on a 13-inch MacBook Pro for my own workflow. And you can see in one of my edits when we talk about how your timeline gets so much taller you can see I've got just a few things here that are above into a sort of a third track if you will most of my b-roll is on the second level with all of my a-roll in the main timeline of course I have some titles that go up but I don't have to go very far to navigate up and down in my timeline and even if I go over here and change my clip height once I'm getting closer to a final edit I don't have all this up and down that I have to do to navigate through and start zeroing in on the portions of clips that I need to revise. So if someone had a timeline like this and they wanted to switch it over to more of the magnetic timeline method of editing versus the gap clip method, what are some tips that might help them do that? The first big tip is using the keyboard shortcut command shift down arrow to start moving things down into the primary storyline. You can do this with your A-roll that you have underneath your video to get everything more down on one level. The second tip pertains to your B-roll clips and using something called secondary storylines. Secondary storylines give groups of clips that are above the primary storyline magnetic timeline properties. So if you wanted to take these four clips of B-roll, let's say, and get them into a secondary storyline, you'd want to first bring them all together so that you have only what you're going to see on screen included in the secondary storyline. Then you'll select all those clips and hit Command G and it'll put this gray container around them and it sort of groups those clips together. Now you can move them around inside this container and they move around like the magnetic timeline. This container also has a connection point you can see to this first clip, so that's definitely something that you want to be aware of. But what's nice about using the secondary storylines is not only the magnetic timeline-like properties, but you're also just using the exact portion of the clip that's going to end up in your video. There's nothing extra underneath these clips as they're stacked and laddered up upon each other. Now with your clips in the secondary storyline, you can do things like you do to clips in the primary storyline, like a slide edit. So you can hit T to engage the trim tool and then press and hold Option, 
and you can slide this edit around if you want to adjust exactly where it is in the b-roll you're taking away frames on the left and adding frames on the right and that's called a slide edit of course you can do normal edits like this where you're pulling frames in and out of either side to get these dialed in just the way that you want them. Now one thing you're going to want to know with these secondary storylines is how to change the connection point for a secondary storyline. Let's say we want to change the connection point from this clip to this clip. What you need to do is click on the secondary storyline, the gray box that surrounds it, and there you're going to put your cursor, hit command option, and then click, and you're going to see that connection point move here. You can't do it here I'll undo this. You can't do it on the actual clip because it's in a secondary storyline. I'm hitting command option click and you can see that connection point isn't moving. You have to click on it up in the gray area to get it to move. So when it comes to working with your B-roll, I think this method where you're using the magnetic timeline along with secondary storylines is going to give you a more minimalistic timeline and less frustration the further into your edit that you go. The gap clip method I think is great for assembling a rough cut and I think it really can move quickly in those early stages, but I feel like you really pay more of a price in the later stages of your edit when you're wanting to add transitions, do different effects, render out your timeline, or even export your timeline. Now when it comes to working with your A-roll, the part of the video where you're speaking to camera like Marquez does in all of his videos, there's a couple of ways that you can build that edit. I'm assuming that Marquez is really working in his browser and listening back through his different takes and then marking an in and an out and then hitting Q and putting that portion of the clip on his timeline and then going through, listening again, finding the portion that he wants to use marking it in and out, hitting Q, and then lining them all up. I do mine a little bit differently, and this is the magnetic timeline method using a couple of handy shortcuts. So I'll put the whole thing in the timeline, and then one method like Dylan Bates, the Final Cut Bro uses, is he looks at all these gaps and then uses the range tool to select the portion that he knows he's not gonna use, hit the delete key, use the range tool again, and then hit the delete key. So that's one method of doing this. The other method that I really like is to be listening back as you go through your video and then let's say you want to use this so portion the of the clip months, my editing experience on the Mac studio has been pretty darn great and you see this gap here that you want to get rid of uh, now it's a small gap but I'm gonna hit command B and then I'm gonna move my cursor over here and hit option left close bracket and it's gonna butt those two clips up next to each other let's say this big gap I want to remove I'm gonna again hit command B and then over here hit option left close bracket and bring that in now one big difference between how I'm editing my a roll and how I think Marquez is editing his a roll if you look at this little symbol here you can see that I've got a multi cam Whereas Marquez, I think, is using a synchronized clip. Now, the thing that I like about using a multicam is that when we go inside of it, you can see that I have two angles in here. I have my wide, and then from the same angle, I've cropped in to make a closer angle. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to use the keyboard shortcut Command, Shift, Right Arrow to switch angles back and forth. Command, Shift, Left Arrow brings it back to the wide. So as I'm editing and doing these little jump cuts, I can go from my wide here to my close and switch angles more easily. So I'm not having to stack clips above each other to have one that's the wide angle and then one that's the tight angle. That's one of the advantages of using both the multi-cam workflow for your A-roll as well as the magnetic timeline. Now with the magnetic timeline method to do J and L cuts, you're going to hit Control S on your keyboard to be able to separate but still have linked the audio and the video. So you can move the audio independently of the video and do this, which is a J cut, or you can do an L cut, which is this. The reason they call an L cut is this shape is an L, and in the other example, that shape is a J. And that brings me to my next tip. When you have your clips in a primary storyline or in a secondary storyline, you can do what's called an audio crossfade. So you select both clips and then hit option T and you'll see that it adds a few frames to do an audio crossfade. Let me do that again, option T, and you can see that it crossfades those clips, but it automatically does these overlapping cuts. So you have a uh, J cut here and an L cut here. But you can see that with, again, these clips in the magnetic timeline, that's a feature that you get that you don't get with Marquez's version because those pieces of A-roll aren't overlapping. You have to do the overlap yourself, then pull the faders out. It's a little bit, to me, clunkier to get those nice crossfades. Like for an audio crossfade for this, I have to do this, 
and then maybe drag this one out a little bit and then bring this slider over. I can't just select both these clips and hit option T and do an audio crossfade. You see nothing happens to the clip, it doesn't work. All right, so you've embraced the magnetic timeline style of editing and you've got your A roll and your B roll roughed in, but now you're gonna start doing some revisions and polishing and the magnetic timeline might be getting in your way. I'm gonna go through five tips that'll help you work with the magnetic timeline instead of against it. Now, the first thing to know is the position tool. I don't use this tool very often, but it's sort of this turning off of the magnetic timeline. It lets you move clips more freely in your timeline, but the problem is that it can be destructive. So I've got the position tool set you can see it's this arrow that doesn't quite look like the cursor. And if I click on a clip and move it around, you can see it is overriding clips next to it. That's because it's basically saying you can put this clip anywhere you want. Now, when I was using the position tool, you can see that these clips are moving with it. If I don't want those clips to move with this clip when I'm using the position tool or even when I'm using the normal select tool, I can press and hold the Grav key, which is next to the number one on a QWERTY US keyboard, and I can then move the clip independent of what's connected to it. This is called the Override Connections modifier, and it allows you to move a clip with the position tool or the normal select tool and ignore the clip connection of the clip that's connected to it. I've got another awesome tip related to that one in just a moment, so hang in there. Something else that helps people work with the magnetic timeline is being able to use gap clips. Again, you can hit option W uh, when you're in the middle of an edit point or in the middle of a clip, and it's gonna insert a gap clip. That gap clip could be sort of a placeholder for something you're gonna do later or something that you can move around to give some space to an edit, give a little bit of breathing room, whatever you need to do. But these gap clips are really great and I use them all the time. Another handy keyboard shortcut for working with the magnetic timeline. Let's say you wanna delete this clip, but you don't want the timeline to compress and mess up your edit or how you have things synced with your audio. If you hit the delete key, it's obviously gonna delete everything, including the attached clips. But if you hit shift delete, it's just gonna delete the clip that you selected and replace it with a gap clip, leaving everything intact with your edit so you can put something else in its place. Now we talked about clip connections before, but they work here as well. You can see this piece of uh, generator has a clip connection here. Let's say I wanna move it further down to this clip. All I have to do is hit command option click and you'll see it change. You can see that this title marked with the purple clip connection is connected to this clip here. Let's say I wanna move it to this clip I can just select this, hit command option, and then click, and you'll see that clip connection move. This is something that is really important for magnetic timeline editors to use. You wanna be able to move your clip connections when you need to so that you can work with the magnetic timeline instead of against it. Now, something that's really cool about the override connections modifier, the Grav key, you can see this cursor pops up, but it goes away when you release the graph key. Well, what if you want it to stay on so you can work for a little while while overriding the connections? If you press and hold the graph key, then hit shift, then release the graph key, the override connections mode will stay intact. So you can start moving clips around. You can see I just moved that one and this is still staying intact. Let's see if we can find another one to move. I can move this one. And again, those clip connections are staying in place and I'm still in the override connections mode. This is the tip that I've never shown in any of my videos, but this is one that comes in handy when you've edited your whole video using the magnetic timeline method and you need to move stuff around, but you don't wanna press and hold the grav key every time you do it. You can enter the override connections mode. Now I have a bunch of other videos about the magnetic timeline, how to work with it instead of against it. I'm gonna link those in the description below, so you'll definitely wanna check those out. I also have a Final Cut Pro playlist that I'll link and that playlist will take you through all of my Final Cut Pro tutorials so you can learn to master the magnetic timeline and Final Cut Pro. So I can't emphasize enough how much I respect and admire MKBHD and all he's accomplished as a YouTuber. I know I'm a little nuts about workflow and methodology, but it's important to remember that just because someone doesn't create the same way that you create, that doesn't mean that they're doing something wrong. My hope is that taking a look at Marquez's style of editing was a great way to show, in a constructive way, some alternative methods that could be helpful to you as you look to master Final Cut Pro 
and the magnetic timeline. Now during this video you may have noticed me using a few cool effects to make my tutorials really stand out. The magnifying glass, the yellow box with cursor, and some animated arrows. These are part of Motion VFX's excellent Final Cut Pro plugin called M-Tutorial. Now this video isn't sponsored by Motion VFX, but I wanted to share with you what I use for every tutorial video to not only teach more effectively, but to give my videos a look and feel that just stands out. I've got a link down in the description if you'd like to check out M-Tutorial. And if you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out another video I made about how to take charge of your Final Cut Pro library and never run out of disk space again. Click here to check that one out. And until the next one, I'll see you all soon. And remember, keep chopping that broccoli.